Are you thinking about moving to Sarasota? Well, don't move until you know these facts about the surrounding areas. Before we dive into anything here, if you haven't yet, please give this channel a subscribe as well as give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already yet. So without further ado, let's jump in and let's show you the surrounding areas of Sarasota and what you need to know before you make the move. All right, so now we are into my computer and now, we were now we're gonna dive into exactly the surrounding areas of Sarasota because if you are new to Sarasota, you may not know all of these little communities, all these little suburbs. And so this video will help you get a better idea of what is Sarasota all about and things like that. So we're going to first start out with the heart of Sarasota itself. We're going to start with downtown Sarasota, which is, I'm going to draw a little circle here for everyone, which is right here. This is downtown Sarasota right there. And what downtown Sarasota, what's unique about downtown Sarasota is that it is more of a historic uh, area. It has historic buildings. Um, it is right on the water of the Sarasota Bay. So as we zoom in here, you will be able to see that downtown is actually right on the bay. You're able to walk from downtown right onto like piers and different docks and even right onto the edge of the water to go oversee the Sarasota Bay. And what's also nice about downtown Sarasota is how close it is to the international airport. And what many people don't know is you can actually fly into Sarasota. You don't have to fly into Tampa or Fort Myers. You can just fly right into Sarasota and then you can drive to your hotel here in Sarasota. And the other nice thing about downtown Sarasota is that it's so close of a drive to St. Armand's Circle. And what I like about St. Armand's Circle and it, it's just basically this small, you know, island that has like boutique shops. Um, it's a big shopping area. I know COVID hit it pretty hard, but now it's starting to come back. Um, there's a lot of shops, a lot of different restaurants. Shore is like my favorite what restaurant to go to, um, but they also have an amazing gelato spot, which is right here. You must try it if you do go to uh, St. Armand Circle. But what also is nice about St. Armand Circle is that it has Lido Beach. And what Lido Beach is, it's more secluded than Siesta Key. It's more quiet, it's more laid back, it's more relaxed. So if that's what you're into, Lido Beach is the perfect place for you. There's also different resorts you can stay at if you wanna stay on Lido Key and you know around St. Armand Circle as well. But the downside to Sar living in Sarasota is that it's really congested and it takes a lot longer to get to places. Um, like for example, it takes like 15 minutes to get from downtown Sarasota to the airport, even though it may only be like three to five miles, but that's just with all the traffic and things like that. It's gonna be, you know, what you can say or what a good guess would be if something's like five miles away, it usually takes double that in minutes. So if it's five miles, it'd be 10 minute drive. And as we're gonna, then we will start, we're gonna start north since we all know now where Sarasota is. It's this big area right here. We're gonna go north and start in Bradington. Now Bradington is comprised of like West Bradington, South Bradington, East Bradington, North Bradington. <clears throat> and Bradington as a whole is known to be more congested. Um, it's very more tightly packed in there. Uh, it's for say. Um, it's more, you know, more houses are closer together, more buildings are closer together. It takes a lot longer to get to different places, like from the airport to, let's say right here, it's about a 25 to 30, 25 minute drive, I would say, um, just to get to here to there. And it's only like 10 miles away. Um, there is, as far as like housing and, you know, as far as like places to live, things like that. Brading, North Bradenton, South Bradenton, West Bradenton, East Bradenton, all of Bradenton is more of to be known for more uh, more established buildings and more established homes. Uh, there are lower price point homes up in Bradington. And so if you are maybe in a smaller budget, Bradington would be maybe a possible option for you to look into if your budget is a little bit more limited um, because Sarasota does have a little bit more of a higher budget than Bradington. <clears throat> But what's nice about Bradenton is that it's so close to Anne Marie Island. It's like only like a 10 to 15 minute drive to Anne Marie Island. Anne Marie Island is a great little area for beaches, um, going and relaxing and things like that. And so that's another bonus of being in Bradenton would be Anne Marie Island. You're so close. 
Um, and then if we go to the east, we're going to hit Lakewood Ranch. So if you guys don't know what Lakewood Ranch is, Lakewood Ranch is a master plan community here in Sarasota and is one of the first master plan communities in the area. And there's about 26 different communities within Lakewood Ranch. The housing is a little bit more higher price than elsewhere. Um, and there is a CDD fee usually in Lakewood Ranch. It's around 1500 to like 1700 or maybe a little bit more um, annually. And so that is another thing to look out for in Lakewood Ranch is it does have a CDD fee. And if you're looking for drive times, if you're living, if you live in Lakewood Ranch, it's going to be a little bit more clustered in Lakewood Ranch. So if you live up in here and you're trying to get down to here, it's probably going to be about a 20 minute drive just because you're driving through so much residential area. But my favorite part is where Bradenton, Sarasota and Lakewood Ranch all meet. And that is at UTC or University Town Center. The residents and locals call it here UTC Mall. And what's nice about UTC Mall, it's a huge two level mall. It has a bunch of shops, boutiques, um, restaurants and things like that, as well as it's not really attached, but it's detached. It's Blaze Pizza, Target, Best Buy, and also Whole Foods is nearby. So this is basically a major hub for anyone in the area to go shopping and get all their you know, shopping needs done there as well as there is plenty of golf courses around here. We have University Park, then we have Legacy Golf Club, and then we have Rosedale up there as well, Golf Club. And then we also have the Lakewood Ranch Community Club, which is a very exclusive or, you know, club for people that live in Lakewood Ranch, specifically residents of Lakewood Ranch. So now we're going to move south. So now from University Town Center Mall, we're going to head south on 75 and we're going to go down to a suburb or a subdivision called Fruitville of Sarasota. It is also another place where you can buy homes. Um, as you can see here from the map, there's plenty of housing options as well. These housing options may be a little bit more, they're closer together. Um, they're more of, they're smaller homes which means they're a little bit less, you know, a little bit less expensive. So that may be fit into your budget if that's what you're, you know, looking for in Sarasota. It's nice about this area is that it's next to the Big Cat uh, Sanctuary, which hosts like a bunch of tigers, lions. It's a fun little exhibit to go check out. And what I, what's a nice little hidden gem in Sarasota is Rothenbach Park. Now it's this trail. I'm not going to go too much into it because I did do a video. You can click here to go check out that video, but it's backed up to Legacy Golf Course and it's a super nice park where you can go walk around half is shaded, half is not shaded. It is not dog friendly, but you guys can go check out that video for yourselves. Now, as we go down here, we're going to get into like Southgate and Gulfgate Estates and South Sarasota. Now, this area is more of an established area. Now that we're closer to the water, home prices are going to be a little bit more expensive as well. Um, it's a little bit harder to get into homes in these areas just because they're not selling as fast as like homes over here or in Bradenton or elsewhere. It's a little bit more um, slower of an inventory for houses that turn over there. But what's interesting about down here by Gulfgate is that it is the south entrance to Siesta Key. So this is one of the two entrances that you can get into Siesta Key, the south entrance, which takes you to Siesta Key Beach, the main beach right here. There's about 10 access points for you guys to go investigate or check out the Siesta Key Beach, as well as downtown Siesta Key that I like to call it, where you can go and shop a whole bunch of different restaurants or shops and everything like that. My favorite's place is um, made in gelato or made in Rome organic gelato by far the best gelato that I've ever had um, in the places that I've traveled so highly recommend that if you guys go check that out as well and then up here is going to be the north entrance to Siesta Key you can enter you can just enter that if you go down to south or if you come from downtown Sarasota you can take the north entrance and go down Siesta Key that way now now, as we go down to here, we're going to run into Palmer Ranch and Palmer Ranch is known to have more expensive homes, more nicer homes, more, um, they're supposed to be, they're newer homes, I should say, more new communities, more new developments are coming into Palmer Ranch, but they are a little bit more of a higher price range. And then as we get down, keep going south, we're going to run into like Osprey, Vamo, Nokomis, and places like this. And Basically, I like to clump Vamo and Osprey together. It's just more of a residential, laid back, more lifestyle. Um, there's not as much shopping or not as much entertainment in these areas. It's more dedicated for like communities um, and just housing in general. 
And then as we keep going down, we're gonna run into one of our many state parks we have here. Oscar Schur State Park is just a small little state park that we have. Mayaka State Park is over here, hence why there's not many houses back here. And if you can take two ways to get to Venice from Sarasota, you can take South Tamiami Trail or you can take I-75 and then hit 681 down. Either way, it's your choice. Both, both routes are just as fast as each other. So now we're gonna get into Nokomis, which is just north of Venice. And Nokomis is just similar to Vamo, Osprey. It's more of you know communities, more of housing and things like that, less things to do. Now, if we get into Venice, it's gonna have downtown Venice, which is where all these blue um, location pads are. And downtown Venice is rather cool because if you go down there and check it out, you can just walk down, you can see all the historic buildings that are there. You can check out all like the history that was made in Venice. Uh, you can tell it's a well-established community and you can even grab a scoop of ice cream at one of the local ice cream shops and head down and walk to the Venice beach and just walk the Venice beach as well. Now we're gonna. Now I'm gonna show you another uh, area that is just up and coming and is just starting. They just planned it out and they're starting to break ground. It is called Welland Park. I'm soon gonna be doing a video on Welland Park, but it is a master plan community just like Lakewood Ranches. However, what the builders and developers say is that Welland Park is going to be the next Lakewood Ranch. However, Lakewood Ranch has its issues, and so Welland Park is there to fix Lakewood Ranch's issues and make it that much better of a community. And there's going to be set about seven different builders in this area and Welland Park is right here. And this is where seven different builders, like I said, are gonna come in, build communities. There's gonna be shopping involved. There's gonna be pools involved. There's gonna be a whole entire community, like just like Lakewood Ranch, but it's gonna be on the South end down towards Venice. And the other interesting thing about Welland Park is that it's surrounded by the Atlanta Braves Stadium, which is a baseball practice facility for professional baseball players in the off season. Same, if you were taking 41, you would go into Northport. I'm not gonna get too much into these because there's not really suburbs of Sarasota. So you have Northport and then you have Inglewood. We can get into videos if more about that if you guys want to, but here's just an overview, a bigger overview. We have Sarasota right here, which is more of a hustle and bustle type area. Bradington is similar, um, more of hustle bustle takes a little bit longer to get places. Lakewood Ranch is more just communities, uh, more developments. Uh, it's a little bit congested within Lakewood Ranch, but it's easy once you get out to 75 to go travel. And then we're gonna have Gulf Gate Estates and Southgate, which is gonna be more established communities. And then we're gonna go all the way down to Venice, uh, Nokomis, Osprey and Vamo, which is gonna be more retirement, more, more uh, laid back lifestyle, more relaxed lifestyle to be um, to just give you an idea what it's going to be less, less hustle and bustle than Sarasota. I will tell you that. And then down here is going to be Welland Park, the next Lakewood Ranch, as people are saying. So that is an overview of what Sarasota is all about. If you guys want any more information, just put them in the comments section below. All right, so that concludes today's video about the surrounding areas of Sarasota. Once again, my name is Noah Ward, and I'm a local realtor here in Sarasota, Florida. And if you have any questions whatsoever, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Just put them in the comments section below. And if you haven't yet, give this channel a subscribe and also like this video if you have not as well. Until next time, I look to see you guys all on the flip side.